to Sam Pufo against Robbie Regan from Kevin Forest in Wales. Into the ring, the light bright shirt you've got a glimpse of then of referee Dave Paris. And don't worry, we have paid our electricity bill down here at the York Hall Bethnal Green. We're just adding a bit of atmosphere for you. Robbie Regan into the ring first. Baby face youngster, just 21 years of age. Ranked number eight by our regular statisticians, Boxing Monthly. Robbie Regan having just his second bout tonight. Didn't get off to a winning start, so he's looking to open his account. Against Francis Ampufo, coming into the ring there, being led by Darky Smith and Charlie Magri. There's Ampufo. And the ubiquitous Darky, who, as we've said before, gets on our Pro Box programs more often than the test card. There's Ampufo, a nice little gargle, and into the ring. Charlie Magri, former world flyweight champion, following him in. Let's get the ring announcements now from Alan Hughes. The boxers are in the ring then for a flyweight contest at eight stone three pounds over six three minute rounds. Introducing in the red corner with the gold shorts from Blackwood in Wales, Robbie Regan. And his opponent in the blue corner with the blue shorts from Bethnal Green, Francis not surprisingly, the crowd solidly on Ampufo's side, local lad At from Bethel Green. Today, Regan and Ampufo both scale eight stone three pounds. Your referee for this contest is again Dave Paris and your timekeeper. The burly Bob figure Smith. of Dave Paris, who will loom over these two flyweights. A little bit of eyeballing. Looks a bit like a, a genial uncle, Dave Paris, about to give them their pocket money and send them out to the shops to buy some sweets. <laughs> Schedule for six three-minute rounds. This is the first. And Pufo in the navy trunks and Regan in the gold trunks. Well, Jim, Francis Ampufo made his pro debut at the tail end of our last screen sport visit to the York Hall in Bethnal Green. Won that on points. Now he gets the chance to have to open the show in front of a very big crowd as well. Yeah, Francis is a, is a real nice guy and a real character. Um, apart from that, he's a very good fighter as well. He's very, very strong physically. And... Um, he looks, even tonight, looks a lot more relaxed in his opening round where he's got, already got that one contest under his belt. But looking at Regan, he also looks like he knows the score. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting contest by the looks of him, even though it's only the opening round. It's hard to believe that these two boys both scaled eight stone three because. If you look at Ampufo, beautifully built, solidly muscled, and he looks a, a good three or four pounds heavier than the Welsh boy, Jim. He's like a little pocket battleship. You know, he's very, very physically strong, and um, he trains very hard, and uh, full credit to him for being in such great shape. Well, when you've got 
got a couple of boys in the ring, both of them having only their second pro outing. Don't expect fireworks too early for both of them. It's a very, very important fight. Regan looking for his first pro win, and Pufo looking to maintain the winning style he notched up a few weeks ago here at the York Hall. And just a little smear of blood coming from Regan's nose now in this first round as he backs Ampufo into a neutral corner right above us and tags him with a good jolting short left. An encouraging round this for the Welsh boy so far. Yeah, he shook Francis up uh, a little bit earlier with one of the big shots of these and uh, grinding confidence now, but he doesn't want to get into a slugging match because Francis is very, very strong. Very, very strong. And um, he's going to turn into quite a, quite a battle, I should imagine. I think Regan's going to steal the opening round. He's doing that at the moment, using the ring well. And Pufo stalking his man. <laughs> Big left, right, missed by a mile, right on the bell. Yes, I'd give that round to Regan, Jim. Yeah, I think he got to, Dave. Um, he, he got through about three or four good clean shots. Um, and that was a big difference in that round. Before that, it was a lot of nip and tuck and just feeling your way through. But, um, good down in round to Robbie Regan. Well, Robbie Regan's record, compiled by our good friends and regular statisticians, the good folk at Boxing Monthly. And still waiting to open his pro account with a win. He entered the ring and he looked all business and uh, judging by the first round, he looks like he knows, knows the game. And uh, Francis is going to have to set things up and start putting his shots together and start crawling all over this fella because uh, this kid looks like he can fight. So there we are, both boys professional records for you. And Pufo, one fight, one win. Regan, one fight, one draw. Round two, we're scheduled for six. And Pufo in the Navy, Regan in the gold. Yeah. What Francis has got to do, he's got to look to jot the right hand over the jab because uh, Regan's got a slick left hand. I'm going to try and slow Regan down as well. Welsh boy, very fast, using the ring well. Yeah, he's still got a lot of his amateur uh, habits in him. He's bouncing around side to side and uh, nice snappy punches. So he's obviously got off nice and sharp. His two-minute rounds are suited down to the ground. Sorry, these three-minute rounds are suited down to the ground. Having said that, Francis will come on strong. He's in great condition. Well, it's apparent in the second round that these two boys very, very evenly matched. And you've got to say that even though Ampufo might have come into this particular bout, the favourite to win. Regan is nicking points all the time with that left jab. He not stop working, Jim. I've got to say, Regan's impressed me right from the off. He's, uh, even his entrance to the ring, he just looked... He looked like he knew what he was in there for, and uh, he's justified my early faults. You know, he's very smart, and he seems to be thinking about what he's doing, and he really looks a good pro. I'd like to see Ampufo working a bit more. He seems to be looking for the single shot all the time, whereas I said just a moment ago, Regan has not stopped working. Not all of his jabs are landing, but at least he's throwing them. Yeah, he's very, very busy, and uh, Francis has got to get off with him because he can't afford to drop rounds, especially in a contest which is only of a six-round duration. Yeah, this is a sprint. And if you get your nose in front and, and win a couple of rounds, it, it's very, very difficult for your opponent to peg you back. Correct. Regan's looking to put the shots together as well, so he's not just relying on single jabs, you know, he's uh, he's looking to win this contest, there's no doubt about that. He's not come here to uh, be the opponent in France's backyard. And Fufo still looking confident, hasn't worked out a way yet to to unlock Regan, but he's working on it. A 
Wash the head, says Dave Paris to Ampufo, as we near the end of round two. Regan covers up well on the ropes, slips his man, and we're back out in the centre of the ring. End of the second, I would have go with Regan again, Jim. Well, I'm going to sit on the fence on that one. I thought it was more of an even Stevens. Uh, Regan was getting off with a couple of little clusters, but the last minute of the round, I thought Ampufo dominated. He was uh, chasing and hunting and banged in one or two good body shots. So uh, I'm going to stick my neck out and go for an even round. Well, it's not Robin Regan, of course, it's Robbie. Apologies for that. And we're in Ampufo's corner now, and Charlie Magri is one guy who knows all about flyweights, Jim. Yeah, you couldn't get a better man in your corner uh, if you're a flyweight. I mean, Charlie was the best in the world, and uh, he'll pass on solid advice, as he always does. And Francis has got a lot of faith and confidence in Charlie, and, you know, he really looks up to the little man. And uh, he'll go out and do exactly as he's told. He'll carry it out right to the, to the last letter. And I can't think of anybody better than Charlie Magri to help me bridge the gap between amateur and professional, because Charlie was a great amateur fighter, one of the best. Probably one of the best of all time, and, as far um, as amateur boxing goes. And his, his pro record speaks for itself as well, flyweight champion of the world, so... Say no more. A great bloke to have on your side, in your corner, when you've just taken off your vest and decided to start punching punching for cash. Uh, these, these guys are having a second contest tonight, uh, you've got to remember Charlie won the British title on his third. And Pufo getting in with a couple of heavy shots at the start of his third. Regan felt them. Yeah, fine, Francis is a very, very solid puncher. And he didn't know it before, he knows it now. Francis is steadily, steadily stepping on the pressure now and uh, looking to lift the pace. That's what he's got to do. Yeah, I think Charlie's told him to step the pace up a bit. Like a good novice pro. He's taking his corner's advice and trying to do just that. Caught him with an elbow. That was accidental. <laughs> Much better round this round, Pufo, so far. Yeah, he just seems to have gone up a, up a gear and, um, you know, the other fellow's not coming back so much now. I don't know if the early paces took it out of him a little bit or whether them body shots that he's been absorbing from Francis as uh, slowing down. He certainly slowed right down this round from the two previous. Well, that's right. I said that the first thing Ampuvo had to do was slow Regan down and he seems to have successfully achieved that. Now he's got to capitalise on it. And make no mistake, Francis will keep coming. And I rather suspect that the last rounds of this fight could be a real test of Regan's stamina and durability. I must, um, I must say, though, Francis is very impressive. He's not rushing the job and overreaching or getting over anxious. He's just taking his time and slipping shots, not getting nailed with nothing at the moment, and you know, sinking in solid good shots of his own. So a solid pro performance so far from Francis. That's right. He's missing with one or two, but one or two more are getting through. He hasn't panicked. Well, this is where the benefit of having someone like Charlie Maguire in your corner pays off. You can calm a boy down, tell him just to stick to the game plan and it'll all come good, and it's doing that. And there's a real purpose about Ampufo now that perhaps was just slightly lacking in the opening couple of rounds. Yeah, he's warm to the night's work now, you know, he's got a lot of supporters here, and um, once he's put, pushed them behind out of his faults and got on with what he's got to do, he's looked very impressive, very, very, very cool, cool guy, and uh, looking like a solid pro tonight. And he won that round for me. Yeah, I'd have to agree there. So we're with Robbie Regan in his corner, made the long journey from Kefton Forest in Wales. And although... I know you might have scored the second even, Jim, or even have shaded it to, uh, to Francis Ampufo, but I don't know, I've, I've, still got, uh, I've still got Regan just marginally ahead, two rounds to one. If he's winning, he's shading it, um, and he's obviously got to go with the pace now because Francis is going to keep lifting it, 
and uh, they're only halfway through the contest, so at this present moment in time, I'm gonna, uh, this is a big swing of fortune in the next round. I'll make France a slight favourite if we were sitting in the bookies right now, making a bet on the fight. Fourth round, we're scheduled for six. Francis Ampofo in the Navy and Robbie Regan in the gold. And Ampofo getting to work now. He started winding it up in the last round and he's keeping up that pressure. A damaging right hand shot he throws, the shot we were speaking about earlier, which he looks to do over the top of the left hand. There it is again. We're going to find out how good Regan's chin is in this fight. Caught him then, again with a right. Regan's keeping his boxing together under sustained pressure. He's worked, trying to work left hand, moving around, not getting involved in a tear up. And he just That's let he's got to do. Lamp over, no, he was there then. He won't find nothing wrong with his art being from Wales, that's for sure. Now, as far as the Welsh box is concerned, defeat is something at the bottom of the legs. Yeah, Francis has uh, got to keep this pressure on, because once this guy gets into his style and he's a snappy little boxer, puts good shots to give of his own. Good body shot. And another right on the line. And they've hurt Regan, and they're still hurting him. Three good right digs to the body. Yeah, they signed him right down there, but... Well, Graham is a peanut. He's coming back all the time. And those body shots are really making him slow down, making him suffer. Very impressive performance by Pufo so far. Well, this is where strength could uh, could pay off. Yeah, the pace has been warm and um, Francis is making it hot. That was a little low. That was a little low. I think Dave Paris might have something to say about that. No, nope, just breaks him. Saves him getting booed by a few fan supporters. <laughs> <laughs> and noticeable that those body shots are bringing down the Welsh boys' guard. Make no mistake about that. They're the ones that, that, that get to you. And uh, Francis has got the wild there, he's just closing the range, finding him with the right hand to the belly, and he's switching upstairs. Regan seems to run out of ideas on how to handle people. And again, an old boxing saying, kill the body and the head dies. And Pofo's trying to do that. And Regan being forced to box on the retreat now, and he's getting caught with some heavy shots. I sympathise with Regan, you know, he's, he's trying to make things happen, he's trying to get his boxing together. And the third part of France, he just will not let him settle, he's literally stuck to him like a little blue all through that round. Well, if there was any doubt, Jim, as to the early rounds, no doubt at all now that Ampoco is safely in the driving seat now. Yeah, Francis has taken over in a big way, you know, in the fight scoring-wise, he's probably pretty level even at this stage of the game. But, um, in the fifth round, with two rounds to go, I'm sure you're going to see a grandstand finish for Francis and his second professional victory. Well, I guess we'll find out just how fit Regan is, whether he can stay the full distance, and how many more of these solid right hooks into his rib cage he can take on. You know, he went off at a fast pace as well, and um, that in combination with the solid right hand, he took to the midsection and uh, brought his legs down to uh, almost a stumble rather than the snapping, bouncing fight we see in the early rounds. Penultimate round, scheduled for six. Francis Ampufo in the Navy, Robbie Regan in the gold. Regan knows he's got a little pocket battle chip in front of him now and uh, he's trying to keep his boxing together the best he can and that's what he's got to do. Can't he's, panic or get involved. Well, he's, he started well enough, the Welsh boy, but as the fight's gone on, and Pufo's just got stronger and stronger and stronger, and also faster and faster and faster. Yeah, Fraser's one of them guys who um, think quite 
quite bridged the gap to become a top class amateur, but the program seems to suit him. The rounds, he gets the rounds, the body strength he's got, the patience. And uh, I've been very impressed with him tonight so far. So he's boxing a slick, smart moving boxer in Regan. And he's coped with it very well. Every so often, Regan just clips Ampufo, lets him know that he, he does have a fight on his hands, but these responses are getting fewer and fewer. The big difference now, Dave, than in, in the early rounds is that Regan's boxing more to make the guy miss with shots and not looking to win the fight as much himself, more thinking about survival and self-preservation. As Francis is gunning from every shot. Two there, though, from, from Regan, just keeping Francis on his toes. Regan's corner have clearly told him that get on his bike and not get involved. And getting on your bike is one thing, scoring points is another. And Francis has got to put a few shots together. He's stalking, but he's not really getting through with anything, and he's sort of cut up one tooth himself, so he's going to get too casual. But win the fight. And if he doubted, the effect of the Ampufo body shots. You just take a look at the way Regan's carrying his guard now. Lowered by about six inches from the start of this fight. He's carrying the left hand very low, trying to protect his ribs from those big right handers that Ampufo has been thrown to the body. And you can't really throw, throw a left jab when your glove's down by your hips. <laughs> Just them all there, Jim. Because you've got to keep your left elbow tucked in. That's right. But, uh, Dave, having said that, they weren't a bad round for Regan. Um, I don't know how Dave Paris is going to score it, but he, he showed shaded it in my eyes with, with just some slick jabs and a couple of little one-two clusters whereas Francis was threatening but not actually producing so I'd still like to see a big last round from Francis if he's going to make sure of his decision because it's uh you know the early rounds was definitely won by the Welsh kids so you know it's been impressive by Francis it's, it's a long way from over in my eyes well whatever the result it's been an excellent hors d'oeuvre to the the main course the main event that we've got coming up in a little while Eubank against Corti for the WBC International Middleweight World Championship. Lick your lips. Indeed. That's, tonight we're going to find out how good Chris Eubank is. But that is to come. Right now, a couple of youngsters who've really given their all in this show opener. I think we're going to be in for a cracking time of three minutes. By boys knows it's uh, in the balance. A couple of real boxing babies, just 21 Regan, 22 Ampofo, but I would think both of them have got a pretty good future in this programme. They won't have, won't have many fights as hard as this either of them. Well, both of them can only um, gain an experience in this type, type of fight, is, uh, although they won't think it right now, but long term, it's, it's a great for, for uh, the learning process. Pufo trying to open him up. And Regan very tired now. Francis is hungry to really pull out a grandstand finish and make sure of this decision. And he's really going for it with every shot now. And Regan's struggling to stay with him. Well, and Pufo fresh as tomorrow's milk, but Regan does look tired. And getting caught. And getting hurt. And forced to hold. If he please, it's the last round, that's for sure. Not half. But he's coming back like a good in the Welsh boy. But this is a good, good last round for Ampufo. Great finish. 
Can't be surprised if the ref sits on the fence. Good fight. And the crowd are loving it, really rising to these two now. Crowd's reaction says it all in the closing stages of this sixth rounder. What a strong man Francis is, he really is a powerhouse at this weight. If he just connects once, Regan's so tired he could go. We're well inside the last minute now. It's on a gruelling bout. Absolutely, first class stuff. Regan's still trying his hardest to nick this last round. He knows it's in the balance. The fancy support was giving him all the encouragement he needs. Keep driving it on. Nice little combination from Regan, but really just a little flurry compared to the incessant onslaught of Ampofo. There's the bell, that's it. Oh, would you believe it? Well, we knew it was close, Jim. I suspect neither of us realised quite how close it was. That made a good return. That was a fantastic contest, and, uh, you know, fair play to the Welsh kid. He came in here with a winner's attitude, and he's, he's come away with a win. Well, I had him in front in the early stages. You could argue the toss as to whether Ampufo had done enough. He might have done, but Dave Paris thinks otherwise. Ampufo desperately disappointed to lose his pro record, but he'll come again. And as Jim says, a natural return for Barry Hearn to make on a future matchroom promotion here on Pro Box. So, an excellent show opener. We'll be right back with more live action here from the York Hall in Bethnal Green right after this. Stay with us.